Welcome to Monk Cave, where we have monthly conversations about things that affect us men. So many times we get into relationships, okay, that's expected. We get married, okay, that's expected. And then things go south and our relationships end. We break up or we simply walk out of marriage. Now, many people start having those conversations and putting those tags on men. Oh, this one is a failure in marriage. This one is a deadbeat dad. This one cheated. This one is all sorts of things. But have we ever paused and asked ourselves, so what is going through that person at that point? What is it that men go through when they get out of relationships, when relationships end? Women are very good at talking about what they're going through. Men don't. They don't get an avenue to. What they do is they get a lot of judgment from the society. Now, let's talk about that today. And our guest is Leroy Malu. Leroy, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Leroy is a man who is a father to four children with two different women. Married twice. Yeah. Been in a committed relationship twice. Twice. As you want to call it. Yeah. Um, when, how old were you when you got into your first relationship? And this one we're talking about the first marriage. Um, we uh, should have been about 22, thereabouts. Uh, first uh, committed relationship. Uh, got my son at 24, which is crazy because that's the same age my dad was when he had me. So that was like a milestone for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was, that was about the age. Started early, I think. Yeah. But, um, you know, I don't, I, don't re I don't regret when I started a committed relationship. It was an experience. Yeah. It was an experience. Being a young dad, it was almost cool, actually. You know? It's like I had my stuff figured out made the decision to be mature. So this wasn't coincidental. This wasn't by accident. This was, uh, it was planned. Let you, me tell you. You were in a relationship. Yeah. You wanted to be in this relationship and yeah. you wanted to start a family. I, I wouldn't say that was the plan, but you know, once, I, once I'm committed, I'm committed. Okay. Right? That's the way I looked at it. Mm -hmm. And that was my experience. And I don't know how many people can honestly say that their first child was planned. Right? That, that <laughs> I don't know what sort of level of planning you'd have to have gone through to know that, especially at that age. Yeah. So our first child was not planned, but was welcomed. Yeah. Okay. And how was it with the, with the family, the extended families? Your family, her family? Um, I think it, the simple, simplest way to put it is that it was cordial, right? For a while, um, you know, there was resistance in terms of you guys are too young. Yeah. What do you mean be, uh, living together? You're, I mean, you're having a child together now and stuff like that. So there's a bit of resistance in the beginning, but all in all, cordial relationship. It, it was mostly about the timing. All about the timing. And, uh, you know, I mean, people perceive things the way they view them, right? So they'll only try and rationalize or make sense of situations or people based on their internal yeah. pers perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So how long were you in this relationship for? Just over 13 years in total, I would 13 say. 13 years? Yeah, it's a committed relationship. Right? You raised a child from birth to teenage? Yeah. Okay. Did you get other children in between? We had two children in the first uh, marriage. Okay. Yeah, boy and a girl. The boy is 14 years old giving me the headache of all teenagers. Right. Right. And the little girl is turning 11. So Leroy, yeah. after 13 years, actually, yeah. maybe longer than that, right? Yeah. Because we're talking about 13 years since the boy was born. Yeah. Um, but you had a relationship even before this. After so many years together, Yeah. what happened? Um, closer to the 13th year, I personally just uh, felt Things weren't working out based on my behavior, based on how I felt, um, you know, about being in the relationship. And ultimately, it 
it needed to come out of my mouth to say what were you honestly, feeling what is this that you what 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 is this about your behavior and your feeling of the relationship you know when when you're not happy in a relationship or comfortable anymore and you don't say it for a long period of time mm. it 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 kind of becomes toxic in you and brings out the toxic behavior you know you stop being kind you start being angry you know you take to drink for example i think my parents probably thought i was doing drugs at the time or whatever but uh, you know you you start taking on toxic behaviors and even just behaving toxically towards people you love yeah and people you care for and respect you know what i mean so for me it got to a point of realization where i just had to say something and things had to change but what led you there life what 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 <laughs> makes what makes a relationship get to that point where at one point you're happy and then at some point you start feeling like you're drifting apart like you're not getting you're not getting the value that you should be extracting from this relationship it's it's interesting i don't even know whether relationships should be looked at like that in terms of extracting Extraction of value. value yeah it's not a mine mm. you know and uh, people are different right people are different and people change and people get tired of certain things um and it's in fact the the mo- there's a friend of mine who says something profound which i use everywhere things don't end wrong they start wrong right so when i look at it like that i'm like probably the issue was a may have been a small issue in the starting of the relationship and over the years it just became you know a little crack that became a bigger crack that yes. finally you know just couldn't keep it, keep it up so you decided one day that you want to have an honest conversation with yourself yeah and then an honest conversation with your partner Yeah. And what was this conversation? It was you know, uh the for me it was about becoming aware that I was in a certain space, right? And I was uncomfortable and I was making other people uncomfortable. And I was behaving uh in a manner that isn't like me, right? Cuz I I'm, I'm everyone's trying to be good, right? So when you behave in a manner that suggests that you're not a good person, then you need to open your eyes and you know sort of uh, look at yourself and say what's the problem so yeah i once i figured that out once i became aware of how i was feeling next thing was to communicate mm-hmm. that's it and then you just be as honest and as blunt yet as considerate as possible you know some conversations doesn't matter what you say yeah it will always be viewed or received negatively by the <laughs> the receiver the receiver receiver yeah and how how long did it take for you to actually come out with this information and say you know what this is where i am this is what i'm feeling right now and this is the decision that i'd like us to make yeah uh wow i i i, I can't tell you a specific amount of time but i'd say probably over a year yeah where it, where i was just holding it in of agonizing yes and of, of you having know, the conversation in your head Yeah, yeah, yeah and and avoiding the conversation and avoiding to have well. an actual conversation yeah yeah when you had it how did it play out first with your wife and then with everybody else around you your family her family your friends yeah. your common friends and no one understood no one understood how you can feel uh one way and then change and feel another way right and uh, i think ultimately that's because maybe they haven't experienced what i'm experiencing um maybe the beliefs that have been indoctrinated in us since tene yeah. right but there was lots of denial like you know midlife crisis sort of thing or is found someone you're going through something you have got into drugs or yes, you have another woman in a cult someone actually told me they thought i'm in a cult I don't even know if there are any cults in Kenya since the the ones that are on the news a long time ago. <laughs> But yeah, that that was the that's what I had to face. What did you tell them? So I'm just playing it out mm. here where you first explained to your wife. Yeah. And of course, I I can imagine she didn't just take it lightly. She didn't sit back and say, "I was waiting for you to come up with this conversation." Yeah, it's about time it's you about time. crazy guy. Of course she <laughs> it, it wasn't easy. 
No. And then beyond that, now having to break the news to everybody else. Yeah. It's when you realize it's it's as if I was in a relationship with uh, a town. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that many of us were invested in this thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, it wasn't received well. Were you having the same, let's say, comfort telling everybody else the same way you had gotten to, you had, you had already gathered up some courage yeah. to have this conversation with your wife? Yeah. When you're going out to explain it to others, were you at the same level of, of, of confidence? You know, it's different with different people because uh, people have viewed you in a certain way for so many years mm. and are not ready for any change, right? And you talk about courage, it takes a crazy ton of courage to have an uncomfortable conversation as that. But, um, you know, like I told you earlier, the moment I had the conversation and went through it, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. And for me, that's what gave me the energy to speak to everyone else and be open and candid and just say, you know what, it's time for me to change. But it was much easier then. It was because I didn't have the weight on my shoulder mm. and I'd spoken to the most important person in this communal <laughs> relationship, mm. you know? Yeah. How soon before you got into the next relationship? Uh, there's probably varying answers from different people, but <laughs> it was just under a year. Yeah. In just under a year, you've walked out of a 13 year relationship yeah. and you're ready to start another one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I've got to ask that question. It's the elephant in the room. No. Had you okay. started this, this relationship yeah. while you were still in the previous one? No. No. I, I knew uh, the lady concerned and we were friends, but we were not more than friends. Right? So. Okay. What does that mean? You were friends, but you were not more than friends like acquaintances, colleagues. So there was no physical intimacy? No, there was not no, even. Was there emotional intimacy? If you just look at it what, critically what? speaking, like you got into a point where you feel more comfortable opening up to her. Ah, Stuff no. that you've been doing no. with your wife. No, it was more like, uh, guys, where are we having a drink this uh, Friday, right? Mm -hmm. um, no, like I, I know what you mean by the emotional sort of intimacy, yeah. but no, we didn't It have wasn't that. there at all? No, that developed much later. Okay. Yeah. At the point when you're starting then the second relationship, mm. going by the experience of your first relationship, yeah. did you have like a checklist of things in your mind that you're thinking, okay, you know what, I've just come out of a relationship bruised, I need yeah. to be more careful but as I get into another one. Did you have those kind of, you know, fears, even internal fears? Yeah. Of course. I mean, uh, first one is like, wow, are we, am I moving too fast? Um, you know, last time it started off well and years down the line it wasn't so well. Um, but for me, it was more about being considerate of the other person. Be more considerate, right? Don't be the kind of person who, you know, demands you know, that you, you be like this or you be like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're like this, I'm here. You're like that, you can piss off. Yeah. Right? So I just thought be more considerate of, uh, you know, your human. Be ready to compromise a lot more often. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Yeah. And then it's weird. Compromise and consideration are two different are animals. Different. Yeah, yeah. And then you were blessed with children in this second union. Yes. Yes, we were. We were also not... Uh, expecting it like I mean we we're careful but there was a funny story because we knew we we're having one child and uh, you know when we agreed to keep the baby we, we were like yeah yeah let's do this let's go on this adventure yeah right and only for a, like a, when was it two two months or three months down the line to be told so twin a is sitting over here <laughs> and you know she burst out laughing like a crazy person right <laughs> And she said, hey, Nas, you've come in with some jokes, yeah? And she's like, no, seriously, and turned the screen and said, twin A is here, twin B is here. And that's when it hit us that, uh, yeah, it's about to get real times right. two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How did that relationship pan out? Um, 
it was a, it was good uh, in the beginning mm. and okay in the middle and I think towards the end it just got to a point where you know what enough is enough and we have to separate yeah and before you ask it was many things yeah it was many things there's no one thing that um, we can say is the main reason for XYZ mm. but you know people make mistakes you live you learn try and be better is this another of those Leroy having an internal conversation and decided I'm gonna have a conversation are you the one who brought this conversation no like the, the conversation <laughs> you know you, it probably would sound different from different a different mouth but no this this was a hard conversation to have mm. and I would say, just to be honest, probably all my fault. Yeah. When you sit back, you've been in two relationships. They have gone as they've gone. Yeah. There's everything that's happened. How do you feel? How do I feel? Yeah. I mean, when you when you when you place yourself on a pedestal. Yeah. Two failed unions. Yes. Four children that you need to raise. Yeah. Uh, living separately with their mothers. Yeah. The whole having to explain yourself for a second time. Yes. Why you're getting out of a relationship. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Mm, I think the key word you've used is failed. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. the perception here yeah, is that you know, yeah. failed. Yeah. You're a, you're a big man. You should be able to take care of these sort of things. And you've, you've had that twice. Yeah. And the thing is, um, it, it, there's many feelings involved. There's feelings of failure, for sure, as a man, as a dad, you know, as a husband mm. or a potential husband. Um, even just from your belief of what a relationship should be and how it should go, especially a marriage, you know. Uh, but what I've come to learn, and this is from like years of trying to improve myself, is that some things you have to accept, right? In order for progress to progress. Yeah? Do you, do you still wake up in the morning? Do you wake up and sometimes ask yourself whether yes. you have the confidence to <laughs> get into a third relationship? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. I feel, uh, I don't know whether the phrase is battered and bruised. Twice right? beaten. Yeah, yeah. Imagine. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think, I think for now, that's not even a priority for me. Right. And then, hey, I hope I don't get a girlfriend next week after saying that's not a priority for me. But uh, my focus is my kids, raising my kids, doing my best to have uh, mentally healthy, physically healthy children. Right. I need them to know uh, I may not be in these relationships, mm. but I am here. You know what I mean? That's purely my focus, to be the best dad I can be right now. How many sons do you have? One son, three daughters. Yeah, three daughters. Yeah. So as, as you bring up your son, yes. from your own experiences of life, mm. what would you tell him? I uh, would tell him to be very well prepared. For what? Every stage of life. Every it's a bruising battle. It, it is. It is a bruising battle, but it's a learning, it's a learning uh, battle as well. Mm. But uh, be prepared when you want a thing or think you want a thing. Talk to someone, talk to another man, talk to your grandpa, yeah. talk to your dad, talk to your uncle, even talk to your friends. Discuss it openly and say, mm. you know, try and learn stuff so that you're better prepared for whatever. For whatever comes. Yeah. You know, the reason I'm pushing this conversation in that direction is because society would look at you and think, this is Leroy. Yeah. Your, your, your family would see you with another woman and think, oh my goodness, here yeah. we go again. Yeah. But speak, speak to people without them being here. Yeah. Tell them, tell them what you feel, what, what you've gone through, what, mean, what, what goes through your mind yeah. on a daily basis as you navigate through life now in yeah. the circumstances that you find yourself in. I would say very simply be very very considerate of other people 
because you don't know what guys are going through on a daily basis, on a financial basis, on an uh, emotional basis, right? You need to be extra considerate of people. Um, just because, especially men, we won't show uh, fear or sadness. Anger is very easy because it's an aggressive thing, like you're fighting back or defending yourself, but be considerate of others. You don't know what journey they're on. Yeah, that's what I'd say to society. That's what I'd say to every single person. Yeah. Be more considerate. Yes, 100%. There's nobody who just sets up and decides, you know what, I'm just going to have another relationship. No. Come what may, I'll walk out of it. Yeah, and you know the And thing even if you walk out of it, yeah. you are still left with something. Of course, of course. And if that is actually a thing that would happen with someone you know, then you know there's a problem. Which is why, first, you need to be more considerate of the person. Mm -hmm. Two, you should communicate. As, that's if you can communicate. In some cases, uh, communication lines are closed. I'll do what I, I'm going to do, and you can't say anything to me. But in some cases where there's some care or uh, a love, uh, relationship like parent and child, yeah. you should be able to communicate and just say, listen, I see this. Is this what is happening? Can we talk about it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it should happen as early as possible. As we, I mean, check on people, you know? Yeah. Do you think it's important to have a support system? Like, like, you know, another man or two or three that you could go to them at this point and tell them, you know what, guys, this is what's happening in my life. And, and just for you to vent. A hundred percent. And it's, you know, it's so interesting looking back, uh, my biggest support system has been my family, right? my nuclear family, my siblings, my parents, my extended family, and uh, some of my friends. But the way you put it is so important. Having other men where you can come and talk about your stuff and get advice and opinions and information so that you can make the best decisions for yourself going forward. So important, right? And it's crazy, I have not done my research. I don't even know if that exists in this hour Kenya, but uh, I think it's very important. Very, very important. Thank you, Leroy. You're most welcome. Thank you for sharing your story. My pleasure. And thank you for watching Monkey today, as you hear. When men are out there, walking out of broken relationships, they're also broken. They need to be more considerate about their own feelings, because we also feel something.